Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and I'm back again uh, to, to hang out with all of my 1,000 pounds of 1,000 besties. I don't know, I'm still, I'm still workshopping how I somehow call y'all my 1,000 pound besties. Uh, but we're back to talk about the 1,000 pound besties today. So I hope you're excited. I hope you're thrilled. I have to say, every week that I do watch this show, I'm like, am I enjoying this? <laughs> And I just say that out of transparency because, like, I do enjoy it, but sometimes I'm just like, what am I watching? What are we doing here? Is anybody actually trying to lose weight, or is this just an avenue for TLC to make a bunch of pee-pee-poo-poo -poo and sex jokes? You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of where I'm at with this show right now because a lot of it feels just like, you know, I don't kink shame or anything like that. That's not my gig. But this feels like an avenue for people who might have certain kinds of kinks and things like that to enjoy themselves. So, like, if that's your gig, get, get to, get to. But, like, that's not specifically what I signed up for. And this episode has so much pee-pee-poo-poo. I, I mean, like, I know I make jokes all the time about pee-pee-poo-poo in this show and the 1,000 Pound Sisters, and to some extent, I love a pissing and shitting and farting channel situation type of deal, TV show, person, whoever, whatever, but it, it's just like, it's getting to its peak, and I'm like, we spend so much time talking about these people's bowel movements that I don't know if I know a whole lot about them as people on this show to get invested in. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> Let's just get into this week's episode, and it starts off with all the girls going to a boba tea shop to uh, hang out and also for Ashley to share some news. And y'all, these people have never seen boba apparently before. I personally love a boba. Give me a, a, a taro smoothie with some boba in it. Fuck me up, truly. But here are all the sexual fun jokes and a super cut of a compilation that I'm gonna put together for you of just the girls making jokes about balls. But I've never heard of the boba. I'm a little apprehensive. I want um, an unsweet tea iced. I guess the popping pearls, I like things to burst in my mouth. Are you me <gasps> Did you hear that? Holy crap, you just you sucked. One? She sucked the life out of that ball. They busted a lot. <laughs> Tina, just like your first time, just take it. Just let it burst. Take it. Just look up so that you can open your throat. Be, be quiet for a minute. <laughs> the texture was lifelike. Yeah, kind of, except they're not wrinkly. Are horrible people. <laughs> but I bet it tastes better. Oh, it does taste better. If it tasted like that, I would be okay every day. Yes, as a fellow ball lover, um, I would rather not think about the boba in my boba tea, boba, boba smoothies, whoever, whatever, being compared to wrinkly man balls. But anyways, after all of that fun and games, Ashley decides to share with everybody that she has lost her job which obviously is something that is very difficult to deal with and um, also I think makes sense now that she is much more available to film for the show, uh, but also hope that she is financially secure, finds a way to pick herself back up, um, find something else to do. She seems like a very smart, competent woman. I'm sure that there's something out there for her and I hope we get to see that coming soon. But reasonably so, I think the girls and Ashley herself are a little bit concerned that because this is such a life-changing, difficult moment to go through that Ashley might turn to food to cope with the emotional eating and things like that. And so that's going to be an ongoing theme throughout this episode is Ashley talking a lot about how she does use food to cope with difficult situations, difficult things, and we'll see how that goes for her. So we go back to the hotel that Tina, Megan, their partners, and Tina's kids are all living in for one last segment in the hotel before they, they move back into Tina's home. And honestly, I think what TLC intended this segment to be about was like Tina letting us know that they were going to be moving back into their home in a week. But what this segment was really about was poo poo and pee pee. Specifically, it starts off with talking about the poo poo, especially. Did you flush? Yes. I didn't hear sure? a flush. I didn't hear a flush. I, I flushed. 
You may go check. There's a floater. I know it. Aiden, you left the logs. And I have to say, a lot of people have asked me at different points, like, why is Megan living with Tina? What's going on with that? And um, I couldn't quite remember because when they were on the Too Large Discovery Plus show, Megan was living on her own at that time whenever they recorded that and filmed that. But they started off season one and she had moved in with Tina or like I, they didn't show her moving in with Tina, but she was living with Tina at the beginning of season one. So I literally went back and watched part of that episode today because so many people have commented on every single video I posted about this season so far asking why Megan is still there. And the only way that they really explain it on the show in the first season is just that they are not financially, and they being Megan and John, are not financially able to have a place of their own. And that's all they really say about it. I think Tina's explained on on social media that she likes having Megan around, that Megan does help around the house and things like that. But from the way that they portray Megan living with Tina and Johnny in this season <laughs> is that Megan is a nuisance. And I think it's got a lot of people who are watching the show worked up of like, why is this adult woman not able to go live somewhere on her own, do her own things, and she's clearly annoying Tina and Johnny. So we'll talk more about that in the future, but I did just want to answer that or try to answer that for people because I have gotten that comment a lot. And of course, I, I mentioned that it was a poo-poo and a pee-pee segment because the, the PP comes in the second half of the segment because Megan is awful at holding in her pee and they only have one bathroom at the hotel. I've been holding it for a bit. I can't hold it. She's gonna kill me, but. Hey. Yes? Can I come in? So we see Megan barge in on Tina, who's already in the bathroom, and Tina's like, why are there these doggy pee pads around the toilet? What's with the pee pads all over the floor? The men, they miss the toilet, so I line the toilet with pee pads. I got tired of like stepping in urine. It's a thing. We don't stepping in urine. And I find that interesting because another thing that happened in Too Large in the original Too Large series that Megan and Vanessa came from is that Megan couldn't make it to the bathroom from her bed because of her weight and her mobility issues. So she would just pee on a pee pee pad in her bedroom. So I find it interesting that the PP pads have returned, but for a different reason. <laughs> and also because Megan can't hold it, she just goes in the bathtub, in the shower bathtub combination situation type of deal. My is going to the tub. Oh yeah, this is really funny. I have zero privacy and not an ounce of dignity left. Oh my God. Please don't hate me for this. Oh, oh, what has become of my life? <laughs> so yeah, this is a pee-pee and a poo-poo television show. I hope you're happy. TLC is <laughs> really laying on the the ha-ha hee-hee bathroom segments real hard extra thick today. What do you know about real hard and extra thick? But they're laying it on extra thick today and my give a shit meter is very low. Very, very, very low. The next segment we get is Jacob and Vanessa working out in her like backyard on the back patio. And while I'm here, I also, because I did go and watch the first episode of season one to find out the reason why Megan is living with teen I also noticed that, and I somehow forgot about this, but Megan has another son, and he was in the first season, so I'm curious about what happened to him, because we only ever see Jacob. But anyways, it turns out that Jacob has decided that he's gonna start focusing on exercising and eating better, because he realized that there's a lot of things that he wants to do in his life, and he's not gonna be able to do that when he's, like, diabetic and all of that. And of course... TLC loves to include some awkward clips of Vanessa working out in awkward ways. Okay. Yeah, okay. You lean forward. Oh. All right, go do your thing. Baby, yeah. I think I need a cup. <laughs> I mean, that hurt. I'm gonna get on my side and do like this 
Now you gotta take it out of my legs with your legs. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. Well, my fat roll gets in the way now. I gotta move the fat roll. There. Yeah, no, I'm, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's something. <laughs> but overall, I do appreciate that Vanessa is uh, taking a different approach, I think, with Jacob in terms of like, hey, I want to do this with you. I want to spend this time together with you while also doing something that is going to potentially help improve the quality of your life. It's a, a much different approach to getting him to care about those things than you know, that like life or death lecture that she gave him in the last episode. And towards the end of this segment, Ashley shows up to Vanessa's house. And I don't know what really the point of Ashley coming over was because they don't work out or anything. And it's just a quick like Ashley saying like, hey, I'm struggling with emotional eating, which we've already heard her say in this episode, and Vanessa encouraging her to go talk to Dr. Proctor, and I guess her deciding that she will go talk to Dr. Proctor, because she does go and do that in this episode. The next segment takes place in Tina's house, and there are no floors. Well, there's floors, but not like actual like floors the way that they should be, because it's no carpet, no nothing, no finishing on them. The only working bathroom is in Tina's room, which is gonna be another great PP moment for us coming up, so just get ready. And in general, I, you know, I think most insurance is a scam because it hardly ever does what you need it to do in any situation. But I'm really not quite clear on like what the purpose of the insurance covering a hotel stay was <laughs> if like, it's not gonna, if you're just gonna move back into an unfinished house. I mean, they probably got a lot of the like unsafe things taken out of the house. So it's at least probably safe now to live there. But it, it must suck to have to move back into a place that's like not finished, not fully done, because you're still gonna have to move around people coming in to finish repairing the house. So Megan and John are currently staying in one of the kids' rooms, and I guess the kids are staying with either Tina or Johnny's parents while they're finishing up the home renovation situation type of deal. But the reason that Megan and John can't stay in their room in the basement is because Megan just has so much stuff, and the flooding just made it absolutely worse. And we've seen this conversation surrounding Megan's stuff in the past. There were conversations of Megan being like, a slight hoarder, and they even talk about how, like, Megan's like, well, I have plans to get rid of it. I have plans to get rid of it, which sounds like a hoarder's episode, just for the record. Um, and they're like, yeah, you're gonna get rid of stuff, and you're gonna have ten more things to replace it. So it's like, are you really getting rid of anything? But it's interesting because they do cut to a scene where Megan and John are in the new room that they're staying in, and John has already blown up his air mattress and they're working on blowing up Megan's. And it's clear that Megan has already like occupied that place with mess and clutter. Because of this, we get to stay in Mary's room. It's like twice as small as the room I used to stay in. All my is just jammed in there at the moment. So it's a little messy. And of course we get a lot of great just Megan rolling around on the floor, on the bed, humping the air mattress situation types of deals. I'm about to roll out. I can do this, maybe. Ugh! I gotta see if this thing is gonna hold me up. I think we can do this. And I do appreciate, Megan said, listen, TLC has a check. I will roll around. I will hump. I will be silly. I'll make a, a whole fool out of myself as long as TLC comes through with this check and it, and it clears my bank account. <laughs> she said, I'll do whatever you want on the floor, on the bed, whoever, wherever, whatever. But Megan says that this whole hotel stay has brought her and John closer together, 
while the opposite is true for Tina and her husband Johnny. They talk a lot and very candidly about how this whole experience has been very straining on their marriage, which like, how could it not be? You're dealing with a very stressful situation with a home you own, and you're living in a hotel room with six other people. It's just, I'm sure, a lot, a lot of strain on her and her marriage. And they do have a discussion, particularly led by Johnny, about how Megan eventually has to get out, how she has to live, because he's clearly, like, annoyed by her presence. Because they do show in this very same segment a time where Megan comes in to use the bathroom to go pee, and Johnny's irritated. Come in. Hey guys, I have to tingle. I'll be back, I promise I'll make it quick. Shut the door. I will. Nobody wants to see that. At least she washes her hands. Yeah. Do you miss me? What are you doing, Megan? <laughs> Megan, uh. Megan. Is he trying to kick me out? Yes. And she like, comes and, and sits on the beds with them and like tries to be there and it's clear that they're like, we just want some alone time without you, girly. Take a hint. But it seems pretty serious because Johnny's like, listen, if things don't get better, if things don't sort themselves out, like, we might have to talk about me leaving. And obviously that's very serious and would not want that for them unless that's, like, what was absolutely necessary uh, for both of them, obviously. So I hope that they do work it out. I have a feeling that they do because literally... Tina, Megan, and Johnny have been hosting a podcast that's like a, a back to the 80s and 90s podcast where they go and talk about things that happened in those two decades. So I feel like they do all get along and probably some of this is a little bit, uh, maybe not manufactured, because I do believe that it would be frustrating in these circumstances to live with Megan. Uh, but I feel like maybe it's a little bit heightened for the show. And obviously, since they recorded this, I'm sure a lot of stuff has worked itself out. So our next segment is everybody going over to Vanessa's because Vanessa is going to make them some smoothies. And Vanessa talks during the segment about how she wants to see the other girls see all of the work that she's continuing to do, whether that's exercising, eating healthy, whatever it might be. And I gotta say, I really am impressed with Vanessa. Her whole attitude this season is so different than it was in season one. She seems to actually be very invested in continuing to make good choices and work hard at this. And I, I just like really appreciate that from her. And she seems to have such a good attitude when it comes to the other girls as well. Whereas in season one, she just seemed to be full of rage and flying off the handle a lot and getting angry and yelling. And we have yet to really see her do that at all in this season. And I, I feel like something must have clicked for her. And maybe it was also like watching herself back on TV where she's like, I really do need to make some changes in my life. And I feel like she has, and I really appreciate that. Of course, there's nothing on this show that can't be made sexual, so this little smoothie party is gonna feature a moment of Ashley trying to bend Megan over. Hey, you trying to get me bent over? Not, not right now. It is that kind of party, but it's not that kind of party. And again, Vanessa's trying to make some smoothies, and these girls are out here acting like Vanessa is um, trying to kill them because she's such a bad cook. I mean, ever since Vanessa's had surgery, she's got on this whole health kick, which is great, great, but she can't cook that well. Oh God. It's something to kill us. She's trying to kill us. And I'm just want to be like, literally y'all, it's just some blended up fruit and maybe an occasional veggie. Like it can't be that bad. Like smoothies are so hard to mess up unless you're blending you know, uh, uh, strawberries and, and blueberries with like, I don't know, a, a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> like, I think it's gonna be fine. Of course, this is also a moment for somebody to share really important news because that's like one thing that they love to do on this show is like bring them together with food so that they have to share some very serious news with each other and, and Megan, is letting the girls know she's ready to jump off the cliff. And I've decided to jump off the cliff. So you're killing yourself? What? I'm getting married. 
And Vanessa's response to this absolutely kills me. Like, she is easily, like, my favorite part of the show probably 75% of the time this season. I'm just so obsessed with her and her her response to the people around her and how she interacts with everybody. Like, I really just want to be her friend. But yeah, I guess Megan's finally getting married. She's been engaged for two years. She did get engaged at the end of the Too Large episode that I've already referenced multiple times today. Um, so if you're curious about what that looked like, you can go back and watch that episode on Discovery+. Plus. I do have some questions, at least the way that TLC has presented it, about what Megan's motivations are here because she talks about how, like, she it's going to keep her motivated to look good in her wedding dress. And I don't know, personally, that feels like flawed logic to me. I remember I used to, like, think about things like that. I mean, obviously not getting married in a wedding dress because I'm never getting married, but, like, other, like, smaller things that I wanted to look good for and how once those things passed, I stopped caring again. And it just doesn't feel like a sustainable way to care about your health when you should be caring about it for all kinds of reasons, not just because you're getting married. But Vanessa and Tina both share some concerns. Vanessa mostly seems concerned because Megan is almost kind of like a caretaker in some ways for John in the sense that she seems to have to remind him to do all the things that like an adult should be able to do like wake up and go to work take your medicine things like that and so Vanessa has some questions about like mm, how serious is this like Megan are you sure you want to sign up for this for the rest of your life and Tina's just concerned because she's like y'all besties you're in my house and you really think you're gonna kick off a marriage by uh, John carrying Megan over the threshold of my house, like not even y'all's own house. So I think that that's probably a fair concern on her end. But all of the girls do a toast with their smoothies to Megan and Vanessa says this. To Megan's wedding. Prayers it happens. And Megan's offended by Vanessa saying that. And I, I can see actually where Megan's coming from because like, that is not super helpful. It's probably not what you want to hear when you just shared, like, the exciting news that, like, you're full on going to plan this wedding. But I think that Megan's missing why Vanessa's concerned because Megan blames it on jealousy. But I don't think there's anything about Vanessa that's jealous of Megan, in this case at least, because I think what's really happening is Vanessa's just speaking honestly about her perceptions of their relationship and... Vanessa's never been one to, like, beat around the bush about anything on this show, okay? So I feel like, in my opinion, it seems like she's just being direct. Although, I mean, I think that was, like, a snarky comment to make, right? But, like, at other points in the episode, she does, like, articulate... Like, hey, I am just concerned about where this relationship is going. I guess from Megan's point of view while they're filming, Vanessa didn't quite give as much context and she just said the snarky comment. So I guess that's why I'm saying like, I understand why Megan would be upset with it, but I do think Vanessa means well. The next segment is another gym and another fucking trainer. And I think my thirst for all these hot trainers <laughs> is drying up. Is it drying up? It's It's been quenched from all the other trainers. That's what I'm really trying to say. Because Frank the Curvy Killer is just not doing it for me like the other trainers have done it for me. Although I wouldn't say no. I'm Frank, um, I go by the name of Curvy Killer. I specialize in training curvy women. But overall, I think I'm getting tired of these segments in general because every episode so far has had them going to some kind of gym and doing some kind of workout with some brand new uh, trainer, instructor, whoever, whatever. And it's clear that they're just staging these things for them for the show because one, the, the girlies aren't clearly doing any of this consistently because they're not making any progress. Like, I mean, at least in this episode, we know Ashley didn't make any progress. Spoiler alert for the end of my review. But like, how are you maintaining a consistent workout schedule if every single time you go to work out, it's with somebody new in a different setting? Like, 
part of getting in a good workout is building some level of like consistency, some kind of thing that you're used to doing and routine. And so clearly they don't have a routine if every episode we're going to a new place. I will say the segment did give me this very funny little clip of Ashley. Yes. I changed my mind, I wanna be fit. <laughs> we got 15 seconds left on this break. But it also provided this insight from Ashley on what she thinks she got out of that workout. I'm thinking that maybe a pound or two will be lost. Hopefully it's enough. And Dr. Proctor won't be so mad if I haven't get, gotten to my goal. And I feel like I take issue with TLC including narratives like this that suggest that, oh yeah, just from like one workout, you're gonna lose one to two pounds that's gonna be a significant difference in weight loss. I think this plays into, you know, a lot of misconceptions about weight loss, about diet culture, things like that, that uh, lead to people having like problematic relationships with working out, with trying to lose weight and things like that, because it suggests that all you gotta do is one magical workout and you'll lose one to two pounds. And like, I think we all know that that is not really how it works. It requires like a consistent change in your physical behavior and also a consistent change in like what you're eating and what your diet looks like. So the episode wraps up with Ashley going to see Daddy Proctor. And she's going in pretty much acknowledging that she hasn't met the goal. It's been eight months since she last went to go see him and she was 378 pounds when she saw him last and he gave her a goal of losing 30 pounds by the next time that she came to see him if she wanted to get a revised surgery because again she has in the past had bariatric surgery before. One part of these shows that I always find interesting, well particularly like the 1000 pound sisters and 1000 pound besties, maybe a little less of like my 600 pound life, uh, but the, the one thing that I find interesting is that they always present these people as being concerned that they will be kicked out of the program or won't be allowed back into the program or things like that. And maybe that's happened with Dr. Now once or twice on the show and the show's history. But like Dr. Proctor is tied to this show. He's seeing your three other besties on a somewhat regular basis. Like I find it hard to believe that he would just completely abandon one of you. Although he does in this segment allude to like, hey bestie, if you can't make some changes, you, you're, you need to question if this is what the next move for you is. Like, if you can't even do this basic goal, like, you need to reevaluate what you're doing here. So, as you might have guessed by now, based on the things that I've said already in this video, Ashley did not meet the 30-pound weight loss. She actually lost closer to, like, 16, and she has 14 more pounds before she comes back the next time to lose if she wants to continue on with the possibility of having her surgery revised. And in the meantime, between time, he says, why, why not go to a wellness center? Why, why not take a trip to a wellness center? So I'm curious what that's gonna look like for, for the girlies, because they did show the previews for next week. All four of the girlies go to this wellness center together. So I'm curious, I don't know, it kind of feels like a little bit like, you know, if you watch The Housewives, any of The Housewives every season, they take a trip somewhere together. It kind of feels like that. It kind of feels like the 1,000 pound besties version of going on a trip somewhere fun. <laughs> Except like, it looks like they're just gonna like work out and be miserable. So. Can't wait, well, I probably can't wait to see what happens with that next week. Anyways, that's all my thoughts about the episode. I don't know, I, I, feel, I feel conflicted because there are parts of it that I find very entertaining, very fun, and then other parts that I'm like, I don't feel like there's any kind of story or this plot is moving anywhere or that we're, you know, I mean, I get that it's reality TV, <laughs> but like there's usually some driving force storyline situation type of deal. And it just kind of feels like, mm, I don't know, outside of like Tina's house getting ruined, like what's going on? The, the girlies aren't making progress. We get like one check-in with Dr. Proctor and it's just one person each time. 
I don't know. Does all of that make sense? Is that resonating? I know a lot of people just watch me to watch me because they love listening to me talk about whatever. Uh, but if you're actually watching the, the show, I would love to hear your thoughts on the episode uh, in my comments down below. But otherwise, that's all I have time for today. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I post a new video. I also do have uh, videos about the 1,000 Pound Sisters. My video for this week came out a little bit late, so make sure to go check that out if you haven't seen it. Um, and I'll leave a playlist of both the 1,000 Pound Besties and the 1,000 Pound Sisters videos um, in the iCards and also in a pinned comment down below. Uh, make sure to leave me a comment, hit like, click share, and follow me on all my social media. I had so much fun today. I hope you did too, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!